round table. NFL is back. It's, uh, it Can't never wait. sleeps. It Can't never wait. sleeps. No, you know? it doesn't. It's a year-round sport for sure. While it's, we have baseball and the tournament, NBA going on right now, we are we are dialed in on the draft here to bring you the information that you need to make smarter fantasy football decisions this fall. It's kind of like Heath Ledger. Just never sleeps. Somehow I dozed off and woke up in a pile of garbage. <laughs> Somehow you've had an hour and 20 minutes sleep in three days. Poor guy. So he dies because he can't sleep. Yeah. The NFL will never die. We should dedicate this podcast to his memory. Yeah, Heath Ledger. Uh, real quick, sorry about the audio. We have a mic issue here, so we're going to go El Natural. Raw dog this, baby. Do it again. Quarterbacks. Quarterback draft preview. We're going to go through the top five prospects, maybe a couple more. Our rankings, consensus rankings. Talk about why he hates Caleb Williams so much. Uh, neither of us really like him. But uh, let's get into that first. There we go. We're going to go off PFF's uh, standard it's, like, it's, their dra- it's their draft rankings, right? Yeah. It's it's so you'll you'll find a P- pro football focus does a great job of analytically putting these all together. So we just took their list. I haven't looked at it. I just printed it off. I made my list after doing my own research. So we'll see how close we come to them. These guys are the best in the biz. All right, number one, Caleb Williams, Mister. I paint my fingernails and toenails and probably have flames in my pubes. Weirdo. Pink pink phone case. Uh, uh, we're, we're in yeah. Chicago. It is, it is what it is. Do whatever you want. I'm, I'm not judging. Yeah, yeah. I understand. Yeah, exactly. He riles a lot of feathers, though. He he is a flamboyant individual. We're pro-trans up in here, okay? <laughs> uh, trans Ams, that is. Yeah, pro-trans. Uh, number one, number one in everyone's book, honestly. I've heard some people liking Drake May. Uh, we all know who he is. All right, give me your Caleb Williams take, buddy. So we have talked about this, not extensively, but Caleb Williams is the top he's the top pick in this draft he will be the number one player off the board the bears will almost certainly take him instead of trading out of it they traded away justin fields as we talked about in our free agency this is caleb williams is a stud prospect he is a rare combination of arm strength mobility the intangibles i hate talking about the intangibles but he's got quick decision making he is really good at making plays happen right he's he's very improvisational very good under center. He doesn't really play under shotgun, or he, excuse me, he's very good on, in shotgun. He doesn't really play under center much. I guess the one downside is he's not really, he's not Drake May's height, right? No. He's six one. He's listed as 6'1". one. He's two, more like six foot. Two, what is he, 210, I think? Is a 240. He's Rex Grossman size. Yeah, but 6'1", but there's some stretching there, so he's probably six feet tall. So I've got comps for him. My high comp is Kyler Murray. I think there's a lot to both of those games especially their ability, their arm strength and their ability to make plays happen. And then my low comp, I think, I really like this one, though, is Donovan McNabb. McNabb was the scrambling quarterback before there were... That's family. a low comp? That's actually better than Kyler comp, though. Yeah, but McNabb was huge. Mc, right. Yeah, right. so you talk about size, Kyler fits in the mold a little better. So, like I said, the one downside I think you can talk about is his footwork needs a little work, and he's not the prototypical 6'3", 6'4", height. Right. Um, now, we've all heard the Mahomes comparison, which is outrageous because there is only one Mahomes. Uh, and I, I kind of see what they're talking about. Like college, like small school, well, not small school, but different type of program, air raid system, didn't win much, um, and just the the improv that you talked about. Like he, he is 1B to what Mahomes was coming out of Yeah, college. I mean, you, we do have to take his production with a grain of salt because he played at Oklahoma in the Big 12 and he played at USC in the Pac-12, which both of those conferences are – designed for passing efficiency and that and, and passing volume. And so there is a lot to that. I mean, he did win a Heisman Trophy, so nothing to take away from him. He didn't win it this year. But I, some of yeah, the stuff, his year prior was yeah. amazing. This he, year yes, he took a step back. He did. Well, we can talk the about that with Drake May, back, too. Yeah. He took a step back as right. well, which I'm sure we'll get to. So, But I'm not saying hey, he's going to be a can't-miss prospect because there is no such thing as a can't-miss prospect unless you're considering Marvin Harrison, which right. I think most Different people position, say. though. Right. So from a quarterback, he will be the number one off the board. If you're looking to draft in a super flex or in a rookie startup, whatever it is, a your rookie draft or a startup draft, he's going to go high. Don't you agree? Yeah. So my comps upside is a blend of Mahomes and Kyler. You know, a little bit more, I'd say a little, little quicker, a little faster than Mahomes, but not the arm talent, and a little bigger, a little better than Kyler. The downside, Johnny Football. Ooh. That's rough. Well, Johnny Manziel was short, like really he short. He was 5'10", 5'11". Okay. You know, and, but he was slight was the problem, and he was also a co He now, was out of his mind. 
whatever one thought about Caleb Williams, you know, in terms of personality wise, which is one of his his faults, we say, is he's not Johnny Football, okay? <laughs> but I'm just it was kind of a joke, but honestly I see it just because Johnny Football was a hell of a college player and his college highlights were pretty good. Didn't have the arm strength. But he was a good player. Uh, absolutely. And he, he just didn't put any work in. Tremendous player in college. He just would not put the work in. And so that's needed. I have a little exercise I want to do real quick on Caleb Williams. You you mentioned that you still haven't won, but you don't consider him to be one of these can't-miss guys. I don't. I, so I don't think so. I compiled a list of the last 10 top number one overall quarterbacks dating back to like 2008 or whatever it is. Quarterbacks or top quarterbacks. number one picks? Yeah, quarterbacks. Okay, quarterbacks. And I mean, you're just not based on their career they had, based on prospect coming out. Tell me if you think Caleb's a better prospect. Okay. Bryce Young, we're going to go recent. Bryce Young. Caleb. Okay. Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence. I'd probably agree with you. Joe Burrow. Caleb. I'm going to probably take Burrow. The problem with Burrow was it was the injury. So, off the knee injury. Yeah, there was that. I think there was a lot of recency bias with, with having just won the national championship right. and gone on that and he tremendous had a stack run. team. Yes. Right? Yes. Justin Jefferson, just, Jamar Chase. I mean, get out of town. Uh, Kyler Murray. Caleb. Agreed. Baker Mayfield. Baker. What? No, I'm talking about being short. Uh, you're talking about, like, the hype, though, right? Yeah, I'm going to take Caleb here. Okay. Jared Goff. Oh, uh, Caleb. Yeah. Jameis Winston. Caleb. Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck, for sure. Cam Newton. Trick Cam one. Newton. Uh, that one's tough, though. Yeah. Right? Cam Newton never translated to real football outside of his MVP year. <sighs> Man, I'm, I'm going to say I'll never forget that run in the national championship game. Yeah. Pulled down at the one-yard line. You knew he was going to be good right away, but it was what, what could he become outside of just being, you know, a, a bruiser as a quarterback? I thought he was going to. Would you say wash on that one, Cam? And yeah, call it 50-50. I feel like Caleb has more upside, but Cam was always going to be a pretty good player. I mean, Cam is huge, too, right? The butt. It caught up to him. Like, the injuries caught up right. to him. Like, and then never short. fucking throwing flags on him getting helmet to helmet. Right. Uh, and then Sam Bradford. That's an easy one. Yeah, it's Caleb Williams. Okay, so, but there's so a couple, like but he's still. Seven. Yeah, yeah, three. There's, there's like maybe better. three guys better. Yeah. Andrew Luck, for sure. I mean, Andrew Luck was a can't-miss prospect. He was hyped to be. He was the next Manning. And his career would have been if Indy had spent any money putting an offensive line in place so that they didn't wreck his career with injury. Oh, absolutely! I'm always looking for Jack Doyle! Absolutely. I'm always looking for Jack Doyle. You know, the nice about Andrew Luck, and he's on the beach with Jack Doyle right now in butt sex, so good for you. Had a good career. Great guy. Still has a flip phone, by the way. Big neck beard. Uh, all right, number two, uh, consensus, Drake May, UNC, Mitch Trubisky 2.0, I've heard. Possibly. This is a very polarizing player because... I could see him going, being the best quarterback in this class and being out of the league. Well, this this flip flops, right? So Drake May, at the end of not this past year, the year before, he was considered to be the number one prospect. Then he came, he went back for another season. His production took took a bit of a dip, but you you look at his fundamentals. I think he improved quite a bit in that regard. And so then coming out after. Jaden Daniels won the Heisman. I'm pretty sure that the consensus was Daniels would be number two, and now it's kind of flopped again mm -hmm. with Drake May. Do you have Drake May at number two as well? I have at three. Three, okay. So you have Daniels at two. And I, no, no okay. I do not. Okay. Uh, and the reason I have Drake May at three is just because I'm, I'm kind of hedging my bet here because I, I see the upside. Like my comps, upside comps is Josh Allen, Justin Herbert. But my downside comps are Mitch Trubisky and Josh Rosen. Drew Rosen's weird because he was kind of more of a statue. But Josh Rosen was supposed to be a great processor. He mm -hmm. was supposed to be like Aaron Rodgers 2.0. And he was not a can't miss, but he was he was supposed to be a guy. Yeah. Never so got an opportunity. But I, I have Herbert as well as a high side cop. And my low side cop is Carson Palmer. He's like a, a bit of a – he's a little fat. He's a faster Carson yeah. Palmer, right? Drake Carson is a great, Palmer he's a great career, scout, man. scrambler. He's tall, 6'4". He's two – what is he listed at? Two – 430. 230. Okay. Jesus. I'm going to say 214, but he's 230. That's, That's right yeah. between Herbert and Allen, man. Herbert's, yeah. you know, 225, 220. Allen's 245, 250. Yeah. I mean, like I said, he, he improved on some fundamentals, but some of the mechanics are a little sloppy for sure. Get the right coach with him. He can certainly improve on that. And then I think the biggest draw, downside is his decision making. Right? Yeah. He's, he's a fucking gunslinger. Oh, my God. He's, which he's, we like. He's quick, to, he's quick to make the wrong decision, too. We saw that a lot at North Carolina this yeah. year. So. I, I think that we could be surprised and we could see Jane Daniels go over Drake May, but he won't last beyond three. If it's one of it's Washington, it's right. It's New or England. the Patriots will make yeah, a move for at three. Him. One, one, he won't go beyond three. And one of the reasons I kept him because I'm not that high on him, but I did see Will Levis, who all the reports out of camp was he was awful, actually perform 
pretty pretty nicely, dude. Pretty, 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 pretty good. Towards the end of the season, because he he's Drake May is more pro ready than Will Levis. Would you agree? Yes. And Will Levis actually kind of impressed. He didn't do great, but would you agree Will Levis kind of impressed you a little bit towards the end of the year? Uh, Will Levis impressed me like right off the bat. And then I'm not sure what Tennessee did. They looked really out of place for four or five games. And yeah. then Will Levis settled in in the last three, four games. Some looked, gritty drives, yeah. you know. And they're similar players. I think that Levis is a little bigger, a little more. He's muscular. He looks great with his shirt off. Yeah. I like that. Uh, okay, number three, we have Jaden Daniels, your boy. Uh, so you had uh, May at two? I had May at two. I've got Daniels at three. I'm laughing because there's an ongoing joke in our college fantasy group text about Jaden Daniels. And when he was at ASU, we always laughed because, oh, look, the giraffe is back on the field because he's got such a long it neck. It is a long neck? Yeah. Mike well, Lennon style? Oh, my God. It's, it, so I, when I was at ASU's campus, he I was doing some neck. work, and I took a picture that I was at ASU. I was like, oh, visiting the zoo today. And I don't know. It's just an ongoing joke. So um, Gene Daniels, though, outstanding prospect. Outstanding uh, Heisman winner, right? So super fast. Uh, just he... Another LSU stud coming out. He's got incredible arm strength. Did you see the dimes he was dropping at LSU's Pro Day? He looked good. Yeah. I mean, the Pro Day, he's a Pro Day guy. Very much so. Who was he throwing to, though? Brian, two fir- two Brian first Thomas round picks? Neighbors, yeah. Uh, it's just a ridiculous season. I, I think he accounted for 50 touchdowns last year. Uh, tactical, not even a tactical scramble. It's just uh, legs for days. Uh, and he's 6'4". And he's 6'4". Like he, maybe 6'3". Um, the yeah. biggest problem is... Again, he's he, decision making to a lesser extent, but also he was he just had some consistency issues, and you could see that in some of the tougher games where he would he would he would he was quick to pull down and scramble even when the pressure wasn't there. He he kind of felt ghost a little yeah. bit. So you need to settle him down, and then connecting like his lower body with his upper body, like stepping through and actually make planting and making the throw. So those short to intermediate, yeah, he can loft the ball like nobody's business, but some of those short to intermediate where you need some velocity or take the velocity off a little bit, right. he struggled in that regard too. So that's why I've got him down at three. There's there's few more fundamental things to Jaden Daniels than than what we see with Jake Drake May. So I have at five, okay. and you're probably not going to like this, and I did like him originally, and then I started diving deeper, and what like you mentioned, his touch – is not existence, and my high end comp is RG three, a taller RG three, and I'm gonna throw in Lamar there, man, because he's not quite the scrambler that Lamar was, but he's a more advanced passer. So that's that's pretty high praise. And then my low end comp, I said insert raw scrambler here, which <laughs> and I'm telling you what we just saw with Justin Fields. I'm still a Fields believer. I feel like Fields is a better prospect than Jaden Daniels coming out. So you look here. I've got high. Deshaun Watson, and that's not Deshaun Watson 2024. It's Deshaun that's Watson 2018, mm-hmm. right? When came he, in and just dominated. What, when he was a dominant presence on the field, and he had the combination of scrambling, uh, intelligence, decision making, arm strength. The word is playmaker. 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 Yeah. playmaker man. My low. It's right here. It's Justin Fields. It, what, it's what Justin Fields at his worst. Yeah. So that and Justin Fields, I think, is is still has a potential career ahead of him. But Jaden Daniels could flame out in the future. Do you think coming out, who is a better prospect? Would you say Jaden Daniels or Justin Fields? Because Fields is more of an NFL body. Two different conferences. Like the yeah. injury concerns are real for Jaden Daniels, dude. Yeah, they are. Look at RG3, man. He couldn't fucking finish three years. Yeah. Granted, Washington did that him dirty. Was Washington's I mean, fault. Yeah. I'm just saying, he would have got hurt anyway, dude. That's Now he's making terrible takes. God. Worse than our takes, by the way. It's probably RG3. It's probably, yeah, he's bad. It's probably 55-45 Justin Fields to Jaden Daniels. Yeah. And we just saw what happened with, with Fields. And we'll see. that the, the book hasn't finished there. Um, Jay, I mean, you look at what Jaden Daniels did and has done in his career. He's, he he takes games over. He puts games on his back, right? He makes things. He, he, he wills his team to win. Yeah. No, it helps Amazing when you are throwing makers. to Malik Neighbors. And, Amazing. And, they, and, and they, you know it. The SEC is not what it used to be defensively. Okay? This isn't this isn't Joe Burrow's no, SEC. It's not your, your dad's SEC right. anymore. Uh, number four, we have uh, J.J. McCarthy. Where do you have him? I got him at five. I so, got him at four. Okay. So what do you like about J.J. McCarthy? I think he's a winner. I think what we've seen with Brock Purdy, which is crazy to say because he was Mr. Irrelevant, is a lot of the traits you see with J.J. McCarthy, but better arm. Bigger, a little faster. So he's got better better measurables. I mean, I hope so than Mr. Relevant. But 
I, I just I like it. I mean, I think the hype's gotten too too high because this is a guy that was going to be probably a third round pick if it wasn't for the national championship and some of the stuff because his numbers aren't great. You know, he ran a pro style offense, but they didn't let him throw the ball. No, they did. They wanted to run the ball. And what He's, better situation than play action with Blake Corum? You got a, you know Roman Wilson out there. You got some players and. An NFL coach, like he's just I like the fact he's groomed by an NFL coach and winning culture. He's a he's a locker room guy. He is a quote unquote franchise quarterback. I don't want to call him a game manager because he's not. He's better than that. Yeah. But you know, twenty six hundred yards and nineteen touchdowns to four interceptions, it doesn't scream playmaker to me. He's just he's just he's a thin guy too. And so while he does have some legs, I don't see him taking off for the NFL. I don't think he's fast enough to get around the edge and actually make plays happen. I'm a little worried that he's going to just fall into a pocket passer and he doesn't have the accuracy. He, he, I've seen plenty of plays. I watched a lot of Michigan, and I saw plenty of throws where he forced receivers to kind of change route mid, mid, mid while the ball was in the air, right? Yeah. Or have them make tough adjustments in order to bring down the ball. So for me, he's at five. Um, I can see bumping him up or bumping him down to six behind a couple of other guys, but somebody's going to take him because he's got, you're, you're right, the pedigree, the Michigan pedigree, and he won a national championship. Underrated athlete, though, 4'6", four, six, four, four, six, 40. Uh, his three cone was 93 percentile, so like he, he's got good feet. I like his I like his footwork. I like his mechanics and the, the winning thing. So my high-end comp, Russell Wilson, man. I think uh, – Russell Wilson came out and proved that, and he was what a third, fourth round pick. Yep. Uh, pro- and he didn't have he played with. He was a Wisconsin. third round pick. Uh, yeah, but yeah. he didn't throw the ball at all. Who throws the ball at Wisconsin? It's like a Nebraska quarterback. They don't throw the ball. No. Eric Crouch. Uh, low end. Brock Purdy. Okay. So I mean, those are those are decent. Again, the ceiling is lower, but the basement is is pretty high. My high end is Kirk Cousins, mm-hmm. and then my low end is Teddy Bridgewater. So one playoff one? <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, hey, Teddy B, man. Yeah. That injury, that knee injury fucked him. We yeah. don't know what Teddy B would have been. God, I'll never forget that. Oof, hey, that he's, he's carved out a nice little backup role, collecting them checks, baby. For him. Okay, we have on to number five, Bo Nix. He's not in my top five. I can wow. see why he's in top five. Right, Oregon. Very odd. Bo Nix played, how many years did he play there at Oregon? Three? Four? Can't remember. He would know more than yeah. me. Off the top of my head. But you know where I have him? Two? Yeah. Yeah. Dude, quick fucking release, man. Yeah. Uh, I have, here's my upside for him. A bigger Drew Brees. Okay. What do you think about that? A little more athletic, too. Yeah, I mean, how tall is Bo Nix? I didn't really look much into it. 6'2", 270. Yeah, so he's much taller than Drew Brees. He's probably thicker than Drew Brees. Um, bigger cock than Drew Brees. Yeah. You know, he's got all those things. It, you're, you're talking about a Pac-12 system. I mean, his numbers are, are certainly impressive. He's got t- a ton of inconsistency. It's, he, he, I mean, he's got, oh no, he started in the SEC, didn't he? Pretty sure. I just, I love, yeah. I love. He started, he started at Auburn, actually. Who can throw a crossing route better than this guy? Nobody. It's telling you, man, that's a big step. That's the easy throws he's going to make. You get him with the right quarter, the right coach, the right system. I just, I don't know, man. I think he's super safe. And so the question is. My low end's Ryan Tannehill, by the way. That makes sense. Um, Which isn't bad. I no, mean, that's not bad. I mean, Tannehill's had a nice long career. Yeah. He's, he's certainly back up for, from now on. So McCarthy will probably go first round. There's probably talk now of Bo Nix after his combine, him going first round as well. I and wouldn't Daniels, be surprised McCarthy. to see six quarterbacks going in the first round. So let's get on to that. So where do you have next? You have him out of your top five? Out of my top five, yeah. I didn't rank him. I didn't rank him. Okay. Yeah. So would you have him at six though? He'd be seven. No, he'd probably Penix? be six. Penix or him? No, I've got Penix at four, actually. You. Yeah. I have Penix at eight. <laughs> <laughs> uh okay, well, speaking of Penix, uh to to a tug of Iloa without uh most likely it'll be without Tyree Kill, without Jalen Waddle, without Ndunze, without Jalen Poe. Is it just because they're both left handed? They kind of, they, I don't know. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. You see that and you're like, wow, left handed quarterbacks is weird. Yeah, no, I've got Tua as well. And then for my low, I've got Geno Smith. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I didn't do any comps for him just because I don't believe in it. I think he's old. I mean, he's very much. He's struggled for the first couple of years. I know apparently he's a physical beast now. He's an injury concern. Age doesn't. The age for a quarterback doesn't bother me at all. I'm he's going to have a first, a top ten pick. Don't you remember Brandon Whedon? 
Yeah, 28. <laughs> he's going to have a, what, top 10 pick for sure that he played with. He's going to have a second round pick probably in Polk. And then the third guy, I don't know his name, but he's going to be like a fourth round pick. Well, let's see. Jalen Polk, Roman Dunze, and there's uh, another Jalen McMillan. Yeah, yeah, dude. In a wide open conference, like you're talking about, you're, you're, you're taking Bo Nix out because his conference, same conference, man. Don't forget, I mean, he, he looks really good his freshman year in Indiana before the torn ACL. And then he came out screaming his junior year. Listen to this guy because he actually watched, I just yeah. watched a lot of highlights. And some lowlights from him. He had plenty of lowlights his freshman year. Don't just, get me wrong. But there was flashes there what made you think that this guy is a consummate professional. Do you think he's better than Tua? In yes. terms of prospects. In terms of a prospect. Tank for Tua. There ain't no tank for fucking Penix. The good. Penix? So Penix? in terms of a prospect, no. Tua was a more heralded prospect. In terms of their potential now, where I see Tua, I think that Michael Penix has a, potent, a stronger potential future because Tyreek Hill isn't going to be the cheetah forever. It's because you know Tua's trash. I don't think Tua's trash. I think he's propped up by that team. That's all he is. He's a, an average starting quarterback at best. His athleticism is gone. Not that he ever had it in the first place. No, but he's, he he, play, he had plenty of scrambles. He also has Mike McDaniel, dude. Yeah, I know. That's a genius. That's a, literally a triple-headed monster. Like... He's not going into a system like that. That's, that's my worry with him. So the, the, I guess he's you got a difference maker. The, the also the, the fact that there's a conflict Tua is Penix has plenty of injury concerns himself, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Tua had that nasty hip right? injury. Yeah. Well, uh, he had um, multiple ACLs. I think he had shoulder as well at one point. Uh, Michael Penix. So you have Penix at four. I got him at four. I, I still think. Okay. And then you had Bo Nix at like seven. I would have put him at six. Six, seven, him there with Spencer Rattler, I would guess. Okay, well, let's talk about uh, Spencer Rattler. Okay. I actually really like this guy. I have him at six. Uh, that's consensus. Uh, uh, is that seven? Consensus seven, seven. for Rattler. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah. Up. Okay. Um, my comp, you want to hear this one? Yeah. I really saw this. Tony Romo. Okay. Just reckless playing, but like... <laughs> Pretty solid at intermediate throws, but like everything about it, man. He's not super athletic. Neither was Tony Romo. I think the guy can play. And I don't think he's getting talked about enough. And I feel like in a normal draft year, when you don't have Penix, Knicks, all these guys, he's the quarterback four. Okay. This year, he'll probably be quarterback six or seven. He probably has more passing attempts than anybody in this draft class. Four years as a starter. He's probably got, I would guess, 1,200 passing attempts yeah. easily. Yeah, so he's very experienced. Right? And all that being said, I probably playing think he's in different a conferences guy. for different programs, different coaches. Do you think he can be a starter in the league? I think he can get there. I don't think he's a day one starter by any means. No, like the draft capital won't say that. But yeah. Um, okay, uh, great touch, great ball placement, right? I think that he he also wasn't playing with world beaters. Now I do love Xavier Leggett from South Carolina. I do love Xavier mm, Leggett. That's got a boner. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> there, there is that. But, yeah, Spencer Rattler, he bounced around a little bit. Um, he, j he doesn't, you know, he's six foot, maybe? I don't know. What do they got him listed at? Six, six um, one? Oh, I switched the yeah. page. My bad. Whatever. Six one, six, six foot, six he's one. Six one, two seventeen. So, so he's, he's not a six foot, yeah, two He's not a prototypical no. yeah, pocket Tony master. Tony Romo, baby. Yeah. All right. Ryan, good golf. I see. Too. So what do you got? You got him at four? I got him at six. Six, okay. Yeah, that's not bad. I can see that. I couldn't put him ahead of Jaden Daniels as much as I hate Jaden Daniels. So what do you have Jaden Daniels in? I have it at five. All right. So you, you're you you're thinking Williams, May, Daniels, McCarthy, at the very least, are going in the, in the first round. Yeah, and Bo Nix is and a board. Probably Bo Nix. I would take Bo Nix at the end of the first round. Okay. I have him at two, but that, I mean, I you don't got to draft him as such. Yeah. And then uh, the other guy I'm guessing you want to talk about is uh, Milton. I, well, I love Joe Milton, but the guy is reckless. And yeah, he, but he's huge, dude. 6'5", 235. Is he, he a he's, poor man's Anthony Richardson? He could probably throw it 70 yards in the is air. Is he athletic? Yes, he's very athletic. Oh my So what's the, what's the problem? Injury concerns, okay. first and foremost. And the guy's got no accuracy to save his life. If you want a sleeper this year, if you're in a two-quarterback league or you want, look, you want draft rookies, look at Austin Reed from Western Kentucky. He is a... Strong prospect. He's, he's. I think he's a, a third round. He reminds me of Brock Purdy a little bit, where he's going to be a strong contributor to your team. You're going to get. You're going to get two fifty and two touchdowns once he becomes a starter. So you'd agree this is a great quarterback draft class. Yeah, I think it's very. You got a guy strong. like Sam Hartman who is, you know, going to be a career backup, but he's going to be probably playable. Man, the guy's got experience. Yeah, gunslinger. 
You know, he's like, he's like Gardner Minshew. Notre Dame great. quarterbacks don't really transition well. No, but he wasn't in Notre Dame, wasn't he? In this? I feel like he's a Chase Daniel type. Guy that's just going to stay in the league, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Hold the clipboard. No. Look for Austin Reed. I think he's a day three prospect. All right, so you like or, the quarterback or, or, class? Give me a grade on the quarterback class. B plus? Uh, B plus. B plus sounds a generational good. guy, quote unquote. You got four other, five other guys that could be first round picks. Wake Forest, that's where he Wake is. Wake Forest, yeah. yeah. All right, uh, this was awesome. We'll be back with running backs. Can't wait. Maybe wide receivers. We'll see. Okay. And it's been a complete joy. Check this out. Give me a toss, guy. Hey, buddy. Oh. Nice toss, guy. Oh, man. Kid's got a cannon. Go on. Okay. Oh. Oh. I'm sorry, man. 